is Jane and I wanted to talk to you about the spiritual discipline of journaling. Uh, neuroscientists have shown that journaling is good for your brain development, uh, for your emotional health, and for me, I know that it's great for my spiritual health. I looked online and found articles about the benefits. One article listed 83 benefits and another article listed 100. I won't give those all to you, but I will give you a few. It enhances the sense of well-being, improves your memory, can help manage stress, and unburdens your mind. But what about for your spiritual life? Other than those things, I find two particular things that journaling does for me. For one thing, it stands as a testament to God's work in my life. I pour out my heart in my journal. I will write prayer requests. I will write exactly how I'm struggling with an issue. Um, and sometimes weeks or even months later, that issue will get resolved or that prayer will get answered. And often I can look back through those days from the asking to the answering and see how God was working in my life to get me where I needed to be. And that's a great benefit. Someone called their journal the Stone of Remembrance, uh, the way they have them in the Old Testament where she can go and see God's faithfulness. And I think that's a great way to look at it. The other benefit to me is I often come to my study time with God and I've got so many things rattling around in my brain and I think if I could just get those out of my brain and onto paper, I'd be able to settle, settle down and into God's presence. What I find is that the things that are rattling around in my brain often were the voice of God, um, but until I got them written down, I didn't recognize it. Um, there's a great benefit to, to that to me. Um, I have done journaling different ways over the years. Um, sometimes I'll switch it up just to be different. Uh, recently I started something new. At the beginning of our COVID sheltering, I remembered that Brene Brown said that uh, gratitude and fear can't exist in your brain at the same time. So I thought it was a good time to start a gratitude journal. This is just four things I'm grateful for. And every morning I start by writing one page full of things for which I'm grateful. And it does have a way of starting my day off great, but also just there's a sustaining sense that those things go with me throughout the day. And I think I know why. There's a story from the book called Sleeping with Bread about orphans in uh, World War II. They were nearly dead from starvation when they were rescued and brought to a refugee center. And despite given food and shelter and compassionate care, the children couldn't sleep at night. And this went on night after night after night until someone had the idea to give each child a slice of bread. And curled up with that sustenance, uh, they were able to sleep peacefully because they knew they were gonna eat the next morning. The author, Dennis Lim, likens that to the spiritual practice of gratitude where we look for the things that we're grateful for and we cling to those and it nourishes our soul. Now, in my regular journal, um, this is my sort of everyday uh, journal where um, I write letters to God, I'll write the events of the day, I process what's going on in the world, um, what's going on in my family, I might respond to a scripture that I've read or a sermon that I've heard. Um, and the main, to me, the main good that this does is that when I journal, I can be my own authentic self. Um, I'm not trying to be holier than I am or more evolved on an issue than I wish I were. It's just me being completely honest with where I am. Um, and in searching for this talk, I found two entries that were very striking to me. Um, you'll understand that. Um, this was back in 2014 and I wrote, Dear God, why? Nine of your faithfuls killed in Charleston. But not that many days before I had written, it's National Donut Day. But the fact is, that's my life. That's everybody's life. Some days we're uh, horrified by tragedies and we pour out our tears and our sorrow to God. And other days we're delighted by the silliness like something like a donut day. Um, but I am delighted and grateful to God who meets me wherever I am. Um, and I see his hand in my life. And so I'm very grateful for that. Now, if you were going to start journaling or if you're already journaling and wanted to get a prompt 
um, you might try the Prayers of Examine. Prayers of Examine were developed by Ignatius of Loyola in the 1500s, and it's two different aspects, two different parts. The first part is the prayer of consciousness, and in that you examine where you sensed God's presence. And then the second part is the prayer of conscience, where you sense where God was not, or what needs to be fixed or healed in your life. So the writers of the book, Sleeping with Bread, took the prayers of examine and they wanted to make that practice accessible and understandable for everyone, even children. So they wrote this book and they, they couched those same two questions in different ways. For example, you would say, for what moment today am I most grateful? For what moment today am I least grateful? Or you might think, when did I feel most alive today? And when did I feel the life draining out of me today? Or in the super most simple way, when was I happiest today and when was I saddest? The idea is that you would be able to see where God is in your life, where he's blessing you. Um, the author found uh, a new ministry by examining what, what fed him, what gave him life. So I think it's incredibly beautiful and important to, um, to do this, to go through this examining process. I love to be able to write it down and, and go back and see where I was years ago and then imagine where I hope to be years from now. Um, it's basically the Christian walk, just as simple and profound as that. Um, and I, pr my prayer is for you that if you decide that you want to try journaling, that you'll find it to be, uh, as I did, very nourishing for yourself. God bless.